but good. I'm just going to go ahead and start it because you never know what's going to. Dan was sharing about where there you are. Oh, did Beulah drop off? He did. Okay. Hey, Joe. Hi, Rick. How are you? Fantastic. That's good. In Jesus. Amen. Complete in Christ. Alive in Christ. <laughs> I was going to wait for uh, Beulah to see. She dropped off me. There she is. Has anyone heard from John lately? No, I haven't. I think he was to have a shoulder operation or something. Oh, okay. Hmm. No, I haven't heard from him. So Deanne is driving back from Charleston, says uh, Donna is, of course, you know, I mean, she just needs continual uh, uh, just encouraging, uh, man, encouragement from the body, <clears throat> you know, that word of life. But strength-wise, she's really gaining a lot of strength, and getting stronger, wounds are healing, so it's all good, just a process. Right. Well, we were talking, I was actually listening to, uh, and it drew my attention because uh, several, probably a year or so ago, I was uh, <clears throat> drawn, you know, to the word this, the word this or the prefix this. Oh, you listened to Malcolm. And I, well, I was listening to him this morning and I said, well, that's what the Lord drew my attention to some time ago. Yeah. About about this. And and of course he brought some things out that that were uh that I didn't realize, but uh I was looking at that word this because it means the opposite of um uh, or reverse, like yeah. and when we're talking about you know Donna, discourage, you know, dis in other words, that word courage is uh is strength, right? Is yeah. is yeah. And it's the opposite of it's discourage and disappoint and disgrace. Yeah. But that, that that it's interesting because that word originally the word uh, uh was a name for the god of the lower world. Yeah, the underground. And Hades even. Yeah. Or you could say darkness and death. And so that's pretty interesting, isn't it? Even the word disgrace. You know, I was thinking of that word disgrace, which is the opposite of. You know, the very um, word Hades is not to see. Yeah. So when you dis, you're speaking out of what you believe. Mm. Okay. And faith speaks. Okay. Faith speaks, and so does unbelief. Oh, yeah. Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth's going to speak, and it's going to reveal what you're feeding on. Mm. That is just so big. And so many people discount the words of our mouth mm. like it's not important. It's not important what you say. You know, I was, um, I have just had a really blessed week, okay? And Maybe. yesterday, I mean, it was so good because the Lord just gave me a word and, while I was biking. And I was meditating. I've been meditating since Sunday on the woman with the issue of blood. Mm. Okay? Mm. And First of all, before I get to her, I just want to talk about um, that burden being lifted, okay? Yeah. And, you know, he has lifted our burden mm. of having to do. And yeah. And that sin is yeah. not as you ought to be. Mm. And so he's relieved that. Mm. But, you know, we have to let the scripture interpret scripture, right? Yeah. And... Uh, in Matthew 8, 14, 
I, I said this last week and I just want to reiterate it. Mm -hmm. It says, and when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. And he touched her hand and the fever left her and she arose and ministered unto them. When evil was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick that it might be fulfilled what Isaiah the prophet said. He took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Now, the scripture that he's interpreting is Isaiah 53, 4. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. And that word grief is sickness and disease. And sorrows is pain, both physical and mental. Yeah. Okay? So it's part of the atonement. Oh, you yeah. can't take it away. Okay? And um, so in, oh, I just love this. In Matthew 9, speaking of the woman with the issue of blood. You have to always look at the harmony of the Gospels to get the full picture. Because if you take scripture just from one of the Gospels, you don't have the full picture. And so when you take Matthew and Mark together, you get the full picture of this woman. And it says, behold, uh, in Matthew 9, 20, and behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood for 12 years, mm. came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. Now, we know why she touched the hem of his garment. Because in Malachi 4.2, it says that when the son of righteousness comes, he will come with healing in his wings. And that word wings means the extremity of the garment, mm. the hem. Just stop and, and get into that word. Mm. This woman knew the promise of Messiah. Mm. And when you stop and you think of her situation, she was a woman with an issue of blood that was not allowed to go out in public. A woman that had an issue of blood was not allowed to go out. She had to stay in her home. But you know what? She had a promise. She'd spent all of her livelihood on doctors trying to get healed. And she was worse for it. I mean, what she got to lose? Amen? If those Pharisees grabbed her and restrained her, she was willing to take the chance. Mm. That promise of her, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. Obliterated all opposition and fear in yeah, her life. Absolutely. It, it obliterated dis. It obliterated disbelief. Mm. She said, she said within herself, you hear that? She said something. Faith speaks. In 2 Corinthians 4.13, Paul says, it is written, uh, uh, we believe, therefore we speak. We having the same spirit of faith, believe, therefore we speak. You know, I mean, let's face it. The word of faith had it messed up in confess, you know, blab it, grab it, confess it, and the whole nine yards. But there's a truth there. There's a truth that if you really believe, you speak. Because faith speaks. Amen? Look at Joshua and Caleb when they went into the promised land. What did they do? They came out with a good report. They said, it's just like the Lord told us. But then the other 10 spies came out with an evil report and they capitalized on the negative. And so it says, she said within herself, if I can only touch his garment, I shall be made whole. 
But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that very hour. Now that's a short, a short account. Now look at Mark in Mark 525. A certain woman who had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she heard of Jesus, now that's the, that's the operative thing right there. When she heard of Jesus, when she heard the report of what Jesus was doing, she knew this is the one. This is the son of righteousness. He's doing exactly what was prophesied. I just got to touch the hem of his garment. She said, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. And she said, she said, if I may touch his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway, the fountain of her blood dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of the plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? Yeah. And his disciples said unto him, thou seest the multitude thronging me, and thou sayest, who touched me? And he looked around and about and to see her that had done this thing. This is what's so beautiful. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her. Oh, glory to God. She was fearing and trembling when she saw what was done in her. Doesn't that bring you to... Uh, Philippians, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it's God in you that both gives you the will and the ability. You fear and you tremble when you see what God has done on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. It's not a fear of, oh, no, no. It's, it's, a, it's a, your awestruck. Right. Of what has been delivered unto you. Mm. And it says, um, and she came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. You know something? Jesus did not heal that woman. That woman took it. She took healing. She took it from him because she believed the word of God and she grabbed it. And this is the word that the Lord gave me yesterday morning in John 1 11. It says he came to his own and his own received him not. Mm -hmm. But to as many as received him, Lombano, to grab a hold of in order to make use of that woman Lombano, the hem of his garment, and she took her healing because she knew it was there. And that word Lombano means to take with the hand to lay hold of any person or thing in order to make use of it. She made use of Jesus. Hallelujah. And you know what? Jesus loved it. He loved it when people would just say, speak the word and it'd be, oh, I've never seen such great faith. You know what it was? They were believing who he was and what he was capable of. Amen. Hallelujah. And yesterday morning on my bicycle, the Lord said to me, he says, they which receive abundance of grace, and the gift of righteousness. I said, Lord, if I go home and that's Lombano, you've really done it to me. And yes, it is. It's not a passive. Uh, uh, no, 
I'm going to grab a hold of it. I'm going to grab a hold of this abundance of grace, this strength of God and the gift of righteousness. You know, what is, what is the authority of the believer? What is the authority of the believer? In Isaiah 54, it says, in righteousness thou shalt be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression. Fear shall not come nigh thee. And every weapon, the every weapon, not some weapons, every weapon, the every weapon, he said, no weapon formed against you, no weapon formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you, you will condemn it. For their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. When that prodigal came home, the Lord put the ring of authority on his finger. He put the robe of righteousness on his back and he put the, the sandals of the gospel of peace on his feet. Listen, you can't preach the gospel of peace unless you've been clothed in the righteousness of God and you know who you are and you walk in the authority of Jesus Christ. I like, how, I like how it says too, the father put that on him. That's right. The son, he was just like, he was just like, you know, I mean, he was, you know, I'm no more worthy to be called your son. Exactly. You know, so to so me, the, when you talk about the faith, the faith moves in. You know, yeah. against that contradiction, and it, and it's really, it, it's really, uh, the flesh is just like going one way. You know, the faith comes in yeah. Yeah. against that contradiction, and it's the faith of persuasion, <clears throat> persuading. Oh, I don't want to hear that nonsense. You're my son. Yeah, you, know, you are who I say you are. So, <clears throat> and you know that it says. Uh, in John 1 there, it says, uh, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. When you grab a hold of Jesus Christ, you are born of God. And you are making use of Jesus Christ. Now, why is it when we grab a hold of Jesus Christ to receive salvation? Oh, that's good. But don't you go grabbing a hold of Jesus Christ for healing. That's flesh. Hey, he is Jehovah Rapha. His name has never changed. He's the Lord, our healer. Jehovah takes a canoe. He's our righteousness. The Lord, our righteousness. Amen. Yes. And the other word that the Lord gave me was uh, in Colossians 2 6. Yesterday morning, he says, As you received Jesus Christ, the Lord, walk ye in him. Mm. And that mm. is not just Lombano. That is paralumbano. Mm. And paralumbano, para, the prefix, is where we get our word parallel. Alongside. Mm. Paralumbano is, a, is strengthened by the prefix para to convey the idea of one person taking another along with them. Mm. When, G when Paul said, Christ, who is my life? He's talking about Christ with him. Christ, he's my life. Whatever I have need of, Christ is my answer. Yes. I'm not looking to myself. I'm mm. not looking out there. I'm looking in here. And, and let me tell you something. Oh, if people could just get a hold of this word, the same way that that woman grabbed the hem of his garment and was healed, we have a word. You know, Paul, uh, Peter said in his epistle that uh, he has given us 
great and precious promises mm -hmm. that by these we may become a partaker of his divine nature. Mm -hmm. What do you have need of? What do you have need of? Does he have the answer? Yeah. Is there anything he doesn't have the answer to? Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. But you know what? Come on, let's expand our horizons. Let's expand our tank tanks and expect more. Yeah. Honey, if you ain't expecting anything, you ain't getting anything. It's the truth. Right. Where was I? There's, oh. no, there's no lack in Christ, right? There's no lack in Christ. Mm -hmm. Right. And why is it when I'm believing Christ for the abundance of life, which he promised, mm -hmm. uh, people think, well, I'm off the, I'm off the rails. <laughs> no, I'm not on the, off the rails, baby. I'm on the rails. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Christ is my life and everything I have need of is in him. You know, the scripture says, uh, I think it's Philippians, where it says, my God, Paul says, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And I stopped and thought about that. I said, glory. And Moses says, Lord, I want to see your glory. And the Lord caused all of his goodness to pass by him. Mm. So according to the riches of his goodness, mm. How good is he? How good is he? He's far above all oh. that we could ask or think. That's right. But it's according to the power that works within us. Yeah. Now, the Lord showed me, just as that woman had a scripture for her healing, the healing was in the hem of his garments. He said, you've got, you've got a, a promise. Philemon 6, your faith is made powerful as you acknowledge every good <clears throat> thing that is in you in Christ. You know why your faith is strengthened when you acknowledge it? Because it's not something out there. You've got to try and get, twist God's arm. He's already given it to you. Right. It's easier to receive what's already given than to think it's something you don't have that you got to go get. Mm -hmm. You've already got it all. You right. get it from him. You get you got his endorsement too. Oh, let me tell you, he wants to do exceeding abundantly yes, yes, yes. above all we could ask or think, according to the power that works within us. Absolutely. Hallelujah. I tell you, God is good. God is so good. Amen. And he wants to do wonderful things in our midst. But you know what? Our own hearts limit us. You know, Phil, uh, uh, what's his name? Philip? He said, uh, you know, your heart. Guard your heart, for out of it comes the issues of life. And he said that word issues is not only streams, but it's borders. You can never live beyond the borders of what your heart believes. What you believe. That's right. And of your mouth you speak. Uh, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The That's mouth right. speaks. <clears throat> yeah. That's I think you took go back to the some of the maybe the word of faith. I don't know. I was never involved in a lot of depth of a lot of the, those things. Yeah. Uh, just kind of surface because I was never persuaded that that was completely right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it, um, you know, the positive confession, which there is, there is a place to speak, you know, the right things, you know, but uh, it's almost like they, 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 they always miss the root of the situation right. or the problem. And that was the heart was, you know, the persuasion yeah. of the heart, you know, and, and I see that as, as the place that need to be persuaded, just like the woman with the issue of blood. Well, yeah. she didn't just do some kind of a, she didn't read the, the latest yeah. 
how to obtain your faith uh, or healing book or yeah. whatever, but uh, she didn't even really, if you think about it, she probably didn't, she didn't know anything about the scripture or anything else, you know, but there was a, there was a faith. There was a persuasion. She was observing, obviously, through the reports yeah. of what was going on in, yeah. the, in the ministry of Jesus. And, and uh, But there was a persuasion that was telling her, this isn't for you. You shouldn't, you know, you need to back off, girl. Uh -huh. But the persuasion of, of the Lord yeah. was uh, she allowed, she received the persuasion of the Lord yeah. to work beyond all that and grab a hold of what the faith was telling her was hers. That's right. That's correct. Absolutely. That, that word correct. became flesh to her and it became yeah. real. It, it was part <clears throat> she ate it, she digested yeah. it, it became part of her. Right. So she grabbed a hold she of it. the word to make use of. Okay. Yeah. The thing is, but what if she didn't know that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What if she never heard that promise? She wouldn't have been trying to grab the hedge of his garment. No. No. Really it was something. the word. Yeah. The word revealed to her God's goodness. And if she could just grab a hold of that, she'd be made whole. And yet we have so many great and precious promises. Yeah. And so many of the church don't even know what <clears throat> the word of God says. And they well, wonder no, what they're doing without. What I see too is that a lot of Christians are, are walking in even a lot of the benefits of the Lord, but they're not reigning in life. Well, you know, the thing is, you know, Jesus, they're not, they're not really reigning in life. They're still up and down like a roller coaster. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. that's, that's dead. Yeah. That's yeah. Just, you know, Jesus said in Matthew, let me turn there. Hallelujah. He says in Matthew 6, he says in verse 25, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, what you uh, nor yet for your body, what you put on, is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into bonds, yet your heavenly father feedeth them. Mm. Are ye not much better than they? Yeah. Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? Mm. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Mm. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Here it is. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Mm -hmm. He's saying, don't seek these things. Mm -hmm. He said, for your heavenly father knows right. that you have need of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and his righteousness. Mm -hmm. And all of these things will be added. You don't seek the things. Right. You seek God, his righteousness. And when you come to discover who you are, that you are a child of the most high God, you just know your heavenly father is just going to take care of you. Yeah, I'm starting to see that. You know, when he says, seek first the kingdom of God, uh, the kingdom of God, now I'm, I'm, I'm really seeing that that's a kingdom of life. Yep. Where he has his heart was always to share his his uh, life with the Zoe, life that yes. he that he is with yeah. us, the kingdom of life. Yeah. To where we're, to where the king the to where death is no longer reigning over us, but we're we're reigning in life. Absolutely. And, and Jesus, um, you know, when he was raised from the dead, of course, he conquered death 
yeah. and he demonstrated to, to everyone he was with them for 40 days to, for the church that he was flesh and bone that he was actually <laughs> that he was actually uh um you know defeated you know death and that he yeah. that he was alive and so I keep thinking of the early church and what they were busy with and beholding was resurrection life. Yeah. You know, and uh, in that, I feel, and the spirit of life, of course, it says the law of the spirit of life in Christ sets us free from the law of sin and death. So that covers a lot of territory, that, that scripture right there no, and all the that. all the manifest all the man when i think of uh, the law of the spirit of life uh sets me free from the law of sin and death when i think of sin and death i'm thinking of all the manifestations of that sin and death which includes exactly. sickness and disease and depression exactly. and all the dis what and is all the these end things. result what is the end result of sickness death death it ain't yeah. come to give you life baby no, it's no. come to snuff your lights out. Snuff, yeah. snuff you out, cut you. So, cut you, you know, we yeah. say, you know, the spirit of the, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law and sin and death, but we tolerate so much that we don't have to. But it's because we've not been taught you don't have to. Right. Well, there's, yeah, there's other persuasions that creep in, you know, with that. And, uh, persuade people to you know um this way and that way you know like yeah you well the thing is you just gotta listen seek god seek yeah. god he's good discover how good god is and you'll see there's no good thing he will withhold from you amen verse, verse 33 of that same series that you were reading says but seek you first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you yeah Everything you yeah. seek them. No. Yeah. It's just a part of the life. Yeah. And his righteousness is his his really talking about his his goodness, right? Okay. The the equitable goodness. Goodness, yeah, goodness of God to uh come and do away with death and, and to give us his life. You Amen. Know, so that we can reign in his mm -hmm. life. Jan, but, you look like you got something to say. No, you know, I, I just, we're still in the old man. We we don't see that God's provided everything because we, we keep going back to that and say, in, we don't realize the enormity of God on the inside of us. You know, yeah. we come to that, that song keeps coming back. We've made you too small in our eyes. Yeah. You know, it just keeps coming back to me. We, we God is big. We got to make him big, big, you know? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the scripture says, oh, magnify the Lord. Well, you know what? You can't make God any bigger than what he no. is, but no. you can make him bigger in your own eyes. Own eyes. By focus. Amen. Meditating on him and seeing just how good he is. Amen. Right. If we don't see how good he is, he is, it's because of us, not him. Yeah. Speaking of life and not death. You know, magnify life all the time, no matter what you see in front of you. Just yeah. magnify that God is bigger than this. He's the answer. He's on the inside of me. And he's got it all in hand. You know, it's like whatever your heart is full of, that's yeah. what's coming out, you know. And you know the scripture, we discussed it last week, mm -hmm. with with your words, you'll be justified, and with your words, you'll be condemned. Man will give account every idle word in the day of judgment. Well, that's not talking about, you know, one day I'm going to stand before God, and he's going to tell me all the bad things that I've said and all the good things I've said. No, in the day of crisis, right. when, when contradictory circumstances come against you, you're going to speak. Yeah. And either that sucker's going to speak to you and you're going to believe it or yeah. you're going to counter it with what God says about you. Every, no weapon formed against you will prosper and every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you are to condemn it. How are you going to condemn it? You say, no way, brother. No way. You're not doing this. It ain't happening. I don't receive it. 
But if your heart is filled with fear and unbelief, you're going to go, oh, my goodness. This is it for me. It's curtain, stage left. Queens. Get ready for me, Jesus. Right. Come on, what's in our heart? <laughs> we're going to speak life or we're going to speak death. Yeah. Well. I tell not... you, that woman, that woman didn't give two cents about what anybody thought about her. Mm -hmm. She was going after it, baby. If she had to crawl on her hands and knees so nobody would see she was out of the house, mm -hmm. she was going to get to Jesus because she knew he had the answer. Mm -hmm. And you know what? When you know the truth, it doesn't make any difference what anybody says. I'm going for it. Mm -hmm. She was determined. What's so sad is the 12 spies they were brothers, man. They mm -hmm. were all Israelites. Mm -hmm. And two of them had faith and came back with a good report and the other 10 wanted to stone them. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Brotherhood. Doubt and unbelief always disses the believer. Yeah. You know, it reminds me of, um, what was his name? The elder brother of David. Eliab? I think it was Eliab. He was the big dude, you know, that came when, when Samuel came because the Lord said, you know, one of Jesse's kids is going to be the next king. And he saw this guy and he's like, wow, this has got to be the guy. And, and the Lord said, no, that's not him. <laughs> the Lord doesn't judge by outward appearance. Hmm. It was the little runt that was out with the sheep. And then when David came to the battle where Goliath was, you know, his father said, hey, go down and take some wine and cheese to your brothers. And so he goes down doing what he's supposed to do. And the brother goes, I know your heart, the pride in your heart. Uh, David didn't have any pride. He was talking about his own heart. He was judging David according to his own evil heart. He knew what he was there for. He, yeah. Exactly. And he's a coward. And he won't come out against this Philistine. Now the little brother's making him look bad. He don't like that. Mm. This little runt is going to make me look bad because he's got, he's got some guts. He's got everybody in his pocket. Now this little guy's going to mess him up. He's going to he's gonna have some courage to come against this giant? Hey, that's just the way it is, man. <laughs> well, it's the clash of the two wisdoms, and, and you know, flesh profits nothing. That's right. You flesh know, the, judgment of the, flesh, the judgment of the flesh will always, uh, you know, there's no life in it, you no. know. The Lord is glorified in the weak that that show themselves strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Trusting in him. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. The, you know, the Lord says, let your light so shine before men that they will glorify your father, which is in heaven. <laughs> mm -hmm. People will know it's not you. Right. They'll yeah. glorify your father, which is in heaven, because it's bigger than you. In fact, it's it's a a miss a wrong uh personality that would want to get the glory rather than oh, to yeah. give glory to god Absolutely. something wrong with that oh yeah well that's sick yeah. <laughs> hallelujah yeah. you know look at peter at the gate beautiful with the guy begging you know the guy didn't even pray for him mm. he just right. said hey someone gold have i none but such as i have i give it to you Right. And he, he reached to him with the right hand fellowship. Mm. That fellowship, koinonia, the sharing of your faith, the koinonia of your faith. He was giving to him what he had. He was sharing what that he was, had. That was good. He knew he had healing on the inside of him. Here, let me give it to you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory yeah. to that's, God. That's a different story. Do what he had. 
it's on the inside of him. Can you imagine if we get a hold of this? If we really believe that we have the healing power of Jesus on the inside of us? Of course it's not us. It's Christ in us, the hope of glory. Well, you know, let's see that sucker come out, amen? Let's see some glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, when Jesus was about healing, he brought people from everywhere. Look at the guy that was, they took off the roof of the house to get the guy in. Yeah. Because they knew Jesus was the answer. Yeah. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Ain't it the truth? <laughs> Amen. Oh, but you know what? You can be construed as a head case. <laughs> because you get so excited. You get so excited about what God's done. Yeah. I mean, stop you stop and think about it. Let's really get real. If we really believe we've got the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Absolutely. Living in our mortal body. If we really believe it, I mean, if we were really persuaded of this, what a change in our life. And that's the that's the thing too that people sometimes they'll listen and they'll they'll get the wrong idea that well, I've got to somehow muster up this belief, no. you know, which is it totally puts people's heart into a place of condemnation because they feel like they think it's about them trying to muster it up. That's no. why, you know, we bring forth this word, you know, that the word, uh, you know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ, yeah. you know. And how that we need to continue to receive that engrafted word. That's able to, yeah. to get all the diss out of us to, Absolutely. to persuade our heart in the right direction to believe, okay, yeah. so that we can um see, you know, those things, you know. Yeah. And um and experience everything that God wants us to experience, you know. Yeah. But it's not gonna be through some formula. Or some, you know, whatever, uh, you know, uh, rah, 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 you know, let's get going. Let's start believing. It's not going to happen that way. It's not going to happen by us. You know, uh, one thing I've learned is I can't be the Holy Spirit for people. You know, they people have to have their own encounter, intimate relationship with the Lord. You know, they have to sit at the feet of Jesus. Somehow that woman. Uh, somehow she entered in that place of, <laughs> of, of like Janet says, where the word became flesh, you know, yeah. where, where, where it became real in her, you know, yeah. where she was persuaded in her heart, yeah, you know, and, and, and it doesn't give an account to all those that maybe even didn't get what she got, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, the Bible gives us an account of, it's like the, the guy at the pool of, of is it Siloam yes. was healed. Well, well, what about all those other folks that were sitting around there? You know, I don't know. You just, you just say, okay, what's going on with these guys? All we know is all those that came to Jesus to be healed came were to him. Right, right. Some right. people didn't come. And we know he couldn't do many mighty works in his own town Trust because of their own belief. Right. Exactly. It wasn't he wasn't willing. They just didn't believe him. Right. They weren't. Go ahead, Jan. Oh, oh. she's got to go. Oh, she got to yeah. go. I thought she had, she had to go. go. Yeah. Yeah. She had to go. There was an appointment. Yeah, yeah. So, wow. Yeah. It's just coming to know the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. Just resting in his goodness. And the more you, you, the more you discover he's for you and not against you, and that he has paid for everything for you, mm. then um, you just rest in his love, you know? All the blessings he's given us, we've received them uh, as we should, and they're legitimate to us. Yeah. Because if, if he did it, it's good. And we receive it just as if we did it ourselves. 
But the Lord gives us that ability to receive from him. Yeah. Well, we live in a world full of contradiction and Absolutely. false persuasions. Yes. <laughs> Who has believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed, right? Yeah. And it's just like there's lots of reports. There's lots of things out there. Um, and honestly, there's things that, you know, I know people have prayed and, and feel like they believed and nothing happened. Right. Okay. We have to address that, you know, yeah. and, uh, and all these things, you know, of course, that doesn't change the word. It no, let like God be true and every man a liar. Yeah. You know, I so, would so just, we don't want to, we don't want to line up or tweak our doctrines to fit our experience. No, no. exactly. Right. Uh, you know, I, I failed. So it's God's fault. Uh, please. I mean, I've prayed for people and I've seen them healed. I've seen people radically healed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where there was a death sentence. Yeah. God miraculously healed them. Yeah. And I've seen people die. But I know, let me let me say this. Yeah. Uh, this thought came to me the other day. Is it God's will for everybody to be saved? Yeah, because it says it's not God's will that any should perish. Right. Are people perishing? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you cannot use that logic to say, well, it mustn't be God's will for everyone to be healed because look at the hospitals full of sick people. Yeah, that's you hear that so much. See? Oh, yeah. So that's, a, that's, that's trying to catch that's, again. That's part of the carnal side of man that, you yeah. know, uh, the woman you gave me. She's, that's it, right. <laughs> people you know, would sooner justify themselves and condemn God. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm at a place, I've uh, and Lord just, I just pray the Lord just keeps my heart in this place that, you know, if I don't see something happen, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to join with the accuser. That's right, brother. <laughs> That's I'm, right. I'm, I'm going to say, well, you know, it's okay. If it, for me, it's okay to admit, maybe it's something I'm not believing. Come on now. Saying. You Come know, on. it's okay. You know, I'm okay with that. I don't have to accuse <laughs> other you people. Know? Let me tell you something. I so, want to grow. I want to listen. I want to grow in 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 these things. You know. Me too. I want to be pers listen. I want to be persuaded of everything that God wants me to be persuaded about. Is that is so that people so hold out? People no. hold out on you, brother. No, he won't. Absolutely. He will give you those things you want. You know, I uh, from his own. Heart. I think that's called a man after God's own heart. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. persuaded about what god wants me to be yeah. persuaded about what god wants me to to uh to um um walk in to what yeah. god wants me to to possess not only in this life but the life to come he's faithful yeah you know, and i will always judge him faithful because he is faithful he's faithful he he's always he's good faithful. he's always faithful no matter always. what happens okay I'm not going to, you know, even when I am not faithful, he remains faithful. Absolutely. That's right. Amen. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Listen, sooner die believing. Right. Than die unbelieving. Amen. Right. Come on. Yeah. You definitely ain't going to get anything if you don't believe. So, I mean, hey, if I don't even grab a hold of it, I'm going for it. Okay. And what just came to my mind was uh, Paul in Philippians 3. He's, you know, he said how he was a Pharisee of the Pharisees and, you know, he was all of this stuff. He says, but you know what? I count all this as dumb. It don't mean squat to me. Verse 9, and be found in him. Not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness, which is of God by faith, that I may know him. Yeah. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means, now here's the crux right here. If by any means I might attain to the resurrection of the dead. What is he talking about? You think Paul is talking about his salvation? 
No way. You think Paul is saying, hmm, I'm going to try my hardest so I can be raised from the dead? Amen. No way. He's talking about that resurrection life now. Mm -hmm. He says, not as though I had already attained. I'm not there yet. Either were already perfect. I'm not full object. I've not grown into the fullness of the stature of Christ yet. Man, I tell you what, I'd like to be like Paul was. I think he really had it going on, amen? But Paul didn't think so. He said, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend mm -hmm. that for which I am apprehended in Christ. Mm -hmm. He says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. Do we read these words? What does that say but, for me? <laughs> <laughs> but this one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind, that's the good, the bad, and the ugly. Okay? <laughs> you stole that one. And reaching forth unto those things which are before. Mm. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ, in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, mm -hmm. let us therefore, as many as be mature, be thus minded. Yeah. And if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto Absolutely. you. Absolutely. He's faithful. So you see, it's the growing up into the full stature of Christ. Mm -hmm. That's what we were apprehended for. Mm -hmm. To be little Christ people. Well, I was reading something here earlier about how that, you know, there was a, a big shift. You know, again, what the early church was busy with, thinking yeah. and celebrating was really the resurrection life of Christ. I mean, uh -huh. he spent 40 days with them. Okay. Uh -huh. He says, touch me. A spirit doesn't have flesh and bone. Right. And then he says, the same spirit that raised me from the dead is going to live in you. Right. Okay. So they were busy with the resurrection life of Christ. That, that, that And that's why Paul says that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. Exactly. We, we went, but we went from that to when we die, we'll go to heaven one day. <laughs> Oh, isn't that so sad? We went from the from the focus and our attention being on the resurrection life of Christ that was not only appeared to, to them physically, but now in them by the Spirit, the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead now lives in me and will quicken my mortal body, Romans 8. Okay, we went from that uh, uh, to, to, uh, to being persuaded to believe now our focus is more on death and when we and we'll go to heaven one day after we die. Yeah. So so there goes the power of the resurrection. <laughs> you know. And so I'm seeing how it's like again that the point of reference. What's our point of reference? What's our main point of reference today? And, yeah. and what what, are, what we are listening to, what is it pointing us to? Of course, you know. Paul says, don't you know your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, of the living God? He kept bringing the point of reference back to, to the reality of Christ in them, the hope of glory. Yeah. And so yeah. I see that. I see that. That, that is, um, and we talked about this Sunday, how that, that don't be ensnared. Don't be so e easily ensnared or tripped up you know, by all of these other uh, doctrines and, and persuasions that try to ensnare us and trip us up from um, from keeping the main thing the main thing. Yeah, yeah. That makes any sense. Yeah, I do. It's just like, I, I, I really feel like we're going to see a lot more manifestations 
of Absolutely. the spirit when our when our point of reference is where it needs to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, that's yeah. just a a thought came into my mind. If we're thinking like that, we don't have to bear witness with what the whole world is thinking about because some of them may be way ahead of us. Mm -hmm. But there are thoughts that we can have toward our goal in Christ that we can uh, grow more by looking to Christ rather than looking to the world and how well they're doing oh, yeah. spiritually. Mm -hmm. Because God's got his hand on us. Mm -hmm. And we want to hear his voice. We want to respond to him. Yeah. And it's not about it's not about me. It's about hearing the Lord so that I can move in what he tells me. Amen. Inspiration oh, in yeah. our heart. Can you imagine like Jesus? Jesus says, I only do what I see my father do. Can you imagine if you live like that? Mm. Totally carried by Absolutely. the spirit. You know, the other day I had a thought and I said to myself, you know, everything in the Old Testament was a picture and a type of something that God was going to fulfill in Christ. Mm. Okay. So what was the promised land? What is our promised land? It ain't heaven. Life. It's the Zoe kind of life. It's the res it's it's the life of God. It's immortality of life. But you know, he said, I've given the enemy into your hands. Mm -hmm. Now go contend. Yeah. You know, Paul said contend for the faith mm -hmm. you know all hell is going to come against you all hell is going to come against you to try and stop you from believing what god has promised right you know this scripture in um deuteronomy 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 do 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 deuteronomy the Lord said to Moses, listen to this now. The Lord says to Moses, rise up, take your journey, pass over the river Arnon. Behold, I have given into thy hand Sion, the Amorite, king of Heshbon, and his land. Now go and begin to possess it. You got to possess your inheritance, brother. You know, God has already defeated the enemy. Right. That's Satan right. is a defeated foe. Yeah. Okay. Now he says, go and begin to possess it. You got to have a little bit of gold <laughs> brass going on yourself in order to step <laughs> into it. Yeah. Your brass. The, the yeah. righteous are as bold as a lion. When, yeah. you, when you know what Christ did, Okay, and has given you the kingdom. It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Well, go to the king. Yeah, if he's given it to you, then why did we do this? You possess it. There are the enemies that will try to stop you from possessing your inheritance. That's true. Yeah, our, our, our inheritance is uh, is uh, it is life. That is the our inheritance. I mean, when we know that. Uh, our life is now hid with Christ in God. Yes. And that death, really, uh, we've, we've been delivered from death. We there know. Is, there's no fear we of know. death. There's no fear. It's hard to stop a person that doesn't, isn't afraid of death. Come on no. now. <laughs> you know, I mean, no. for me exactly. to live is Christ. For me to die is King. Exactly. You know <laughs> what? I was listening to somebody the other day and they said, you know, we sing when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. He says, and you go to the doctor and he tells you you're going to die and you start bawling your eyes out. What happened? I thought you were looking forward to this. Right. What a day of rejoicing that will be. What's the problem? What's the problem? What's the problem? But you know what? We say a lot of things, but do we believe what we say? That's the question. I think, 
Matt was saying something about, he says, Wednesday night, he says, I think he was talking to Jack. He says, it's like, he says, Jack, I got some good news. Your, your wife was uh, killed in a car wreck and she went to heaven. Well, that doesn't sound like good news. Oh, right. You know, and it's, uh, there's, it's just, I love this, this word about, you know, how that when, when our hearts are fully persuaded, that death is no longer has anything on me. Okay. Yeah. And that's what Jesus was persuaded about on the cross. That's I mean, right. he knew that his, <laughs> that this was, this was a very temporal situation. Yeah. But he, he saw that the joy that was set before him, but we're talking about reigning in life. I keep, I come, keep, keep coming back to this life that now is and the life to come. And we want to make it all about one day in the future and, yeah. and, 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 uh, and discount, discount right. the life that now is the, the life that presently is in us, the spirit of life. Yeah. You know, that lives in us, that, that does make us, what makes us bold as a lion? It's the spirit of life. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Against all opposition, against all death. So when, when the government comes up with, uh, everyone's dying, well, that don't include me, yeah. you know, that has no manipulation on me because I know where my life is. Yeah. You know, you know, let me tell you something. I got no problem with dying and I will die when I'm satisfied. Okay. <laughs> but I'm satisfied. I die yeah. until I'm satisfied. You know, my mother in 1988, when they said there was no hope for her, she was going to die. I said, mother, are you ready to die? She said, no. I said, okay, let's pray. So the Lord delivered her. In 1996, yes. I'm like, mother, are you ready? She's like, Pula, I am so ready. Please <laughs> ask the Lord to give me the big sleep. Okay? So the thing is, no problem. You know, the scripture said. Stop telling how your mother passed. They you already know. Oh, okay. uh, in the 91st Psalm. Uh, and, you know, I wrote, I, I did a message on that, the 90th Psalm, you know, where it says that uh, men's life is 70 and if they're strong is 80. Mm. Oh, strong man is 80. Yeah. Yeah. It's written by Moses. And uh, this is, people take this as this is the, the lifespan of a man. And yet, what he was talking about was in uh, the wilderness. The Lord told them they were going to be in the wilderness. And not one above 20 years old was going to get out of there. They were all going to die. Okay? So people look at this scripture as though this is the length of men's days. Well, wow, you know what, Jim? You've got two years to go. Wow. I can give it up. Don't listen to her, Jim. Don't I'm not. No. <laughs> no. But, but just... Yeah. Divide the world. Yeah, right. And this was this was in the wilderness, and and you can look at it in Numbers fourteen, and how he said that you know they weren't going to get out of there. They were going all going to die in the wilderness. Mm. Only those under twenty years old were going to go in, and uh, and and he wrote the ninety first song, and he says this. He says with one the last verse of ninety first song. With long life, will I satisfy you? Mm. Are you satisfied? Yeah. You know, I had a, a 96 year old man uh, stop and talk to me the other day. Wow. That's and awesome. I said, I'm standing before I, I'm engaging and I'm going, Lord, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to pray for him? And I just didn't feel to do anything. And I just mm -hmm. let him talk. And I went over to him. Mm -hmm. And he said, he says, you know, I most likely shouldn't think like this. But I'm ready to go. Mm. I said, there's nothing the matter with that. Mm. 
That's the Psalm 91 says, with long life will I satisfy you and show yeah. you my salvation. I said, brother, if you're ready to go, I said, you know, the patriarchs, they didn't die of sickness. Right. They pulled up their feet in their bed and gave up the ghost. Mm. I said, you know, my mother, she wanted to go. And she went. She only said, Bueller, I don't want to be alone and I don't want to suffer. I said, and she didn't do either. She was with my dad watching Jack Van Impey having a good old time. Mm. He said, well, that's what I want. I don't want to suffer. I said, well, let's pray. Who wants to suffer anyway? Yeah. I said, Lord, you hear my brother. He wants to go. He wants to be with his wife. He wants to see you. You know, let him have a nice transition. Of course, if I if we keep preaching this gospel, we might we might go by way of Stony. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the, true. The, the That's disciples. True. I mean they they were they were you know they were right they were martyred. I guess you'd say they were. Oh yeah. Martyred. Yeah. Stephen, you know, Stephen, he was fairly young. He didn't die of sickness, but he, he got, he was stoned to death. Absolutely. Yes. But, um, yeah, I feel like, you know, I feel like I shared this too. My mother, I feel like the Lord brought comfort to my heart when he said she wanted to go. Oh yeah. So I gave her the option. Do you want to come? And she said, yeah. And she says, he says, okay, come on. Yeah. That's right. How simple as that. It was a Absolutely. simple. Absolutely. I think it's that simple. It's that simple. And so I'm not satisfied. Oh, I want to, I just, I've got, you know, my heart is to, to, you know, have another 20, 30 years. To, oh, to yeah. This gospel. Oh, heaven, yeah. Doesn't, heaven doesn't need me. You no. know, heaven, uh, that, heaven you knows. know, you know what really gets me when I see on Facebook, when somebody <laughs> passes, uh, heaven needed another angel. Or, <laughs> heaven needed them. Heaven is lacking. We're, we're far above angels, honey. Angels we're aren't people. Of God. Oh. Angels well, we say, I think people say a lot of things to try and make sense out of a lot of situations, bring some kind of comfort to <clears throat> what has taken place. Biden. You can't, you can't Don't write, you, me to you, comfort me. you can't write your own book, though. <laughs> Yeah, there's been a lot of <clears throat> Bibles written. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was reading in uh yesterday, Second Timothy, and um, you know, this was written to Timothy by Paul, who was who was knew his time was short. Yeah, you know, he was being it was he he knew that he was about to be, you know, taken out by yeah. I think it was Nero, I think. Yeah. And uh, it's amazing. This is this is written as his last will and testament. That's to right. Timothy. And when you read it, it's so like there was no one ounce of not one ounce of fear. No. Of exactly. Yeah, I remember yeah. Nero was uh, he had his gardens uh, burned with so, uh, men. Christians. Yeah. Yeah. Torches. Torches. Human torches. Human torches. Human torches. Well, that's and and I hear these, you know, the Fox's Book of Martyrs and the early church, and mm -hmm. and then here, and I say, whatever these guys were on, I want it. <laughs> you know? Yes. It, to me, that's really reigning in life. You know. What Absolutely. Absolutely. No fear. Life. No fear. No fear yeah. at all. Um, but and in fact, he says, um, he says in Second uh, Timothy one, he says he saved us. Called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, where it was given to us in Christ before time began, but yes. has now been revealed by the appearing of, of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and has abolished death and brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. Yes. So okay. it's like, you know, he knew that death uh, was, was no longer the issue. <laughs> Amen. You know, that Christ had come and abolished death. And I just see how more and more believers need to be persuaded in their heart about the right gospel, yeah. about what really took place. Because a lot of them are, are kind of still in a place of thinking, well, God was mad at me. He's no longer mad at me. And that's what the gospel is all about. You know, and they're just living a completely defeated life. Yeah, in this life, because it, their pers their hearts been persuaded towards to believe a lie and not the yeah. truth. Yeah, <clears throat> when is a lie a good thing? 
Yeah. I think we're going to see a lot more of, of, of this, you know, I'd say the, the same power that raised Christ from the dead yeah. lives in us, manifests through us. When yeah. our hearts are persuaded about this life, we're going to see, I believe we're going to see a lot more things take place in this Absolutely. earth. Absolutely. A lot more death just yeah. dispelled, you know, and, and a lot more uh, people like like the the, the 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 man that was healed at the gate beautiful yeah. and, and different things like that when people actually understand who lives in them you know yeah yeah you remember the uh <clears throat> the story of uh saint valentine you know we celebrate valentine's day mm -hmm. did you ever hear the story of saint valentine no uh he was a saint that was in prison for his faith. And he was going to be burned at the stake. I believe he was going to be burned at the stake. And uh, the jailer of the jail had a little daughter. And she would come to the jail with her father. And mm -hmm. his daughter was blind. And she would go and talk to Valentine. And one day before his death, he healed her mm. and she could see. Mm. And uh, and then he was he was burned at the stake. Mm. But uh, you know, he believed in the healing power of Jesus. <laughs> yes. And so did that jailer after that. <laughs> you know, in Acts 17. I think I think too that when we become more um understand that that we're you know that sickness and disease and you know and all these things are is just a is just really a manifestation of of death you know exactly and, uh, and all these things that exactly. it's just like okay this is not what i was created for <laughs> you got it. that's you know that's it right there brother you know i you know i heard a brother say the other day he says, I resist, I resist sickness as I would resist committing adultery on my wife. He says, people will resist sin, but they don't resist sickness. Mm. They just let it wreak havoc. Oh, I can live with this. I, I don't want to live with none of uh, it. A lot of people even give it, give it an address, a permanent address. Oh, yeah, it's fine. The doctor <laughs> says, I'm going to have this. I mean, I've been told many things. You're going to have to have this. You're going to have to have this medication. You will have this the rest of your life. Isn't that disgusting? <clears throat> and so it's like, um, well, that's not the report I'm reading. <laughs> yeah. And you know, how, how smart are we to uh, believe that you're going to have something for the rest of your life? Your body has even just natural uh recovery things built into it to heal you yeah you know I mean, <clears throat> what's I mean, amazing how that adam you know he lived what 900 and uh over 900 years yeah, yeah. In, in a physical body yeah before before he <laughs> checked out so to speak you know I'm but it's just like these bodies oh okay these bodies were wonderfully created by by god but Absolutely. it's the wisdom you know and sin and the false wisdom the corrupt wisdom you know the serpent that caused yeah well you stop and you think of david in the uh, 103rd psalm he said bless the lord oh my soul and forget not all of his benefits how he healed all of your diseases mm -hmm. how he's forgiven all of your iniquities it wasn't he forgave me all of my iniquities, but he doesn't heal all of my sicknesses. <laughs> right. You know, you have what you believe, you know. You know, in Acts 17, the rulers of the city cried, saying, these have turned the world upside down. These disciples have turned the world upside down. Listen, yeah. unless we're preaching the same gospel as they were preaching, you ain't turning nothing upside down. You ain't turning nothing upside down. Right. Exactly. It's going to turn you upside down. 
Yeah, amen, <laughs> hallelujah. And you know what? When you got a big mess <clears throat> like I do, yeah. Then when when <laughs> when I when I believe something, my big old mouth has to say it. I believe, therefore I speak. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. Amen. No, we I, call that we call that the mouth of the south. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the South now. So. <laughs> well, that, there's another catchy thing that says, see something, say something. You know, yeah. that, and that's talking about if you see somebody in, on harm. But you know what? When I hear my conversation and I hear other people's conversation, we're not looking at the same thing. No, no, no. I want to see what God says. Yeah. I want what God says. We well, you know Malcolm was <clears throat> yeah, good good word. This did you listen oh, to Oh, wasn't it good? Yeah, he shared almost how he was taken out early. Oh, you know. Yeah. Um, but uh he was saying, you know, uh giving in everything give thanks for this is the will of God concerning mm -hmm. you and how bad. Then talking about, you know, we think of thanks as, you know, when you you when you receive something, you you thank you thank the person for that thing, like thank right. you for this thing and thank you for that thing. And uh, but he said, really, the 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 meaning root meaning behind that word thanks is to um, see God for who He is. That's he's right. a generous God. Yeah, He's a good God. He's a faithful yeah. God in everything, no matter what it looks like. In everything, give thanks. That's right. In other words, declare you know, the faithfulness and the goodness of God. And he never changes, right? Yeah. You it's know what? It, turning with him, so. That's right. No that shadow. scripture that you just quoted is the scripture that I always quoted in all things, <clears throat> in all things give thanks. Not for. <laughs> but it does say that. Okay. It does. And that's what blew me away yesterday because okay. it says in Ephesians, uh, 520 giving thanks always for all things mm. and that's like whoa wait a minute but remember, <laughs> remember in Romans 8 28 knowing that all things work for the good mm -hmm. to those who love God and are called according to his purpose so if you know that even the bad is going to work something good in your life, you can give thanks to God. Right. But if you don't believe that God can turn uh, ashes into something beautiful, right. you ain't going to. But look at the, the Apostle Paul. Look at the Apostle Paul. He believed this, baby. Let me turn there in uh, Philippians 1. Mm. Let's see. He said, in Philippians 1, he says, verse 12, but I would, you should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me, which it, he's in a Philippian jail, okay, has fallen out rather to the furtherance of the gospel. This is a good thing. <laughs> so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident by my bones. So they were they were getting confident because they saw the persecution of Paul and it gave them courage. Mm. It's much more bold to speak the word without mm. fear. Oh, 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 man, it's like, devil, you messed with me, but you made a big mistake. Mm. It's just like killing Jesus. He thought, hey, I got rid of Christ. What happened? The seed went into the ground. We got three thousand little Jesuses. Oh my goodness, what did I do? Amen. <laughs> some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife, and some of goodwill. The one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing it'll add to my affliction in my bonds. They're doing this thinking it's gonna make it harder for me. How am I going to respond to this? 
He says, but others of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What mm -hmm. then? What? Notwithstanding, every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. Mm -hmm. And I dare, I therefore do rejoice. Yeah. It is bad stuff. Mm -hmm. Yea, I will rejoice. For I know. Here we go, baby. Knowing something, mm -hmm. I know that this shall turn to my salvation. Yes. Even this that was meant to be bad mm -hmm. is going to add to my life. So mm -hmm. if you see that nothing can hurt you, right? You can give thanks for all things. Yes. Yes. You win. Yeah. No matter what. You win. <laughs> You cannot lose for winning. That's good news. You got to... That's good news. It is good news. It is good news. But you know what? This has got to be our reality. Yeah. It's got to be our reality. Mm -hmm. Not just words in a book. Not just fake it till you make it. We got to get yeah, it in our exactly. heart where we're at. Yeah. You know, back to that scripture in Colossians 2 6, as you received, as you paralambano. Christ Jesus the Lord walking in. Mm. Well, how did you receive him? How did you grab a hold of him? Through faith. Through faith. Mm. Mm -hmm. Romans 10 says that if you believe in your heart, yeah. you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, that shall be saved. And and that's the catalyst. Mm. It's faith speaks. So when it happens, it comes out your mouth. You know what I mean? That's how we started this thing. Yeah. We believed and yeah. we spoke. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. the way you received him in the beginning, just keep grabbing hold of and receive everything you have need of. Amen. Because, you know, he's the head. We're the body. And as we behold the head, we receive all the nutrients that we have need of, whatever it is. Well, we are, we are, we are uh, clear examples of that, that. If you really believe something in your heart, you can't help but speak it. You can't right. exactly, exactly. I gotta go tell somebody. <laughs> That's who we are. You, you'll go down on the beach just to have a casual getaway, and you'll okay. be talking to somebody before it's over. To. When it comes up, you have you to. You have to. I mean, you can't hold it in. You can't it's hold like it in. Fire. <clears throat> Shut up. Fire. Your bones. It's like Elio. With the uh, Job's comforters, he let all the old people, he was the young guy, young whippersnapper, he was showing respect. He said, listen, I've held my pay peace, but I am like a wine bat with no ventilation. If I don't speak, I'm going to bust. <laughs> and he had the best stuff to say. Yeah. But. Um, awesome. Yeah, it's. Yeah. Good news. Have, you know. And and the thing is, even when you get in the stink eye, <laughs> <laughs> even when you get in the stink eye from somebody that you're trying to minister life to, yeah, you just can't shut up because you know, listen, man, you don't want it, but you need it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Oh my goodness, I, I get that a few times a day. <laughs> <laughs> Hiding from the stink eye, yeah. But you know what? Can we give it a break? Or oh, the rolling of the eyes, you know, like, oh, here she goes the again. Rolling of the eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that body oh, language. Oh my goodness. But you know, I'm a happy camper, you know? No. Hallelujah. I rejoice. I rejoice. I rejoice that yeah I love that scripture in Romans 15 13 may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in mm -hmm. believing through the power of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. joy and peace is the fruit of believing the truth about what God said amen well this has been good Joe are you on the microphone Unmute yourself. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> Just to let yes, know. It, Sometimes it I is. Sometimes it has a background noises and stuff like that, but go ahead. Yep. 
it is really good. Um, and, you know, I think we threw a lot of stuff out. We threw the baby out with the bath water because we'd been so burnt in a lot of that early stuff because we didn't, um, I guess, in my own uh, life, I saw many healings and I, I believe, you know, I just believe God because um, I can understand being a stone for what you believe. That's the real, what I reckon Jesus was talking about when he said about the persecution and I can accept that, but I can't accept dying of sickness. Amen. Um, That's but the thing, the thing is seek the kingdom with all your heart. You know, you're seeking that of God and, the Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Mm -hmm. So it's not, if we're not healed, I don't believe it's on God. I believe it's something that we are not getting right somewhere along the line, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, yeah. So, and my mother lived until she was a hundred. My husband, I buried him on his 99th birthday. So, you know, and they, mm -hmm. they weren't what you'd call, um, um, seeking the Lord all the time. That was just long liberty and thank mm. God for it. But mm. yeah, like there's a lot of confusion about, I, I believe ab about this, um, you know, healing and, and stuff like that. It's, I've just seen so much miraculous things in my life. I can't leave it alone. You know, I can't, I can't not believe for, for healing. Right. Uh, my, my, children's bread. That's right. Yeah, that's it. My husband had a tumor in his leg when he was in his 80s, and the Lord showed me in a dream to, and I had to make a phone call on this the flip top phones, and it wouldn't open. Every time I went to open it, it turned into this savage dog. This is in the dream, and it wouldn't let me touch it to open it. Mm. And I finally lost my temper. <laughs> And I said, open up, you BBB thing. Mm. And it fell open. And I was able to make this phone call. And the Lord told me I had to go to the hospital and speak to that thing, just as I'd spoken to that phone, basically. Right. They went to operate on my husband the next day. There was no tumour there. See yeah. that? And it was that and I, It was the and yeah. I've always had a big mouth and, and, and speaking out and I've come into a lot of, um, you know, what's the name of, so I'm at, at the point of my life, I'm sitting back. I just want to seek, you know, or I don't want Joe to be coming up in the things. I, I just want people to see Jesus in me, yeah. you know, so that I can, um, you know, minister. Like I've yeah. got no one that, around me that I do, I can minister to cause I'm sitting here on, on my own, but you know, God's not finished with me yet. And, yeah. you know, like when when I was even in the Worldwide Church of God, now that you couldn't get anything further from the truth than what they were, and God <laughs> met my needs even there. Yeah. You know, when I was pregnant with um, um, my son, I started to bleed at around seven months like I was going to lose him. And I saw in the Bible where it says, call for the elders in the church, have them anoint you with oil, and, the, you know, you'll be healed. And that's exactly what I did. And, you know, they came in and went to pray for me. And it was just this, like a thing of warm olive oil had been poured over my head and out through my feet. And it was just gone. So yeah. I just always, you know, run yeah. with that God wants us well. Absolutely. Yes. Well, you know, the, um, John said in his first, third epistle, verse 2, above all things mm -hmm. I want, that you prosper and be in health, health. even yeah. as your soul prospers. Prospers, so yep. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. If in your mind you don't believe God wants you well, guess what? You're yep. never going to have it. That's right. To be mm. transformed by the renewing of our mind that we may allow that good, an acceptable and perfect, and perfect will. Yep. Amen. Us. But yeah. you know, we've got to get this mind renewed so it'll allow what we've got on the inside to be manifest on the outside. Let me That's tell right. you, I am healthy. Yep. I don't have any sickness. I don't take any medication. Okay. 
But you know what? I I want to live in divine health, but I, I want know. to grab a hold of this for people that are suffering. That's you right. Know, I want to be myself and I, my goodness gracious. I want to be moved by the compassion of God, but I've got to know, just like Peter did, you know, silver and gold are my none, but such as I have, I give unto you. Rise up. That's right. And, and walk in the name of Jesus. Yeah. You know, that's the kingdom of God. That's it. And I, I re Love really believe. Signs following. Yep. And, you know, those early Christians, I mean, they fellowshiped with each other, you know, all the time. I mean, you know, I, we don't have that, like what, you know, what they the fellowship and that that they had. And see, iron sharpens iron. And that's why it's so important, you know, to be, um, uh, you know, fellowshipping with people of like mind. It doesn't say to fellowship with people with that who doesn't have mind like you, but to that's fellowship right. like mind. That's right. You know, as a matter of fact, Paul said, evil communications corrupt good manners. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you know, what did Paul say to Timothy? He said, uh, follow after them. Let me see there. Hold on a second. Where is that? Where is that little Timothy guy? Praise God. She likes to read everything out of the Bible. Oh, yeah. Yes. Amen. <laughs> and I've spoken too much. That's too much for me tonight. <laughs> Yes, it was. Let's see. Seek after them. Come on, love. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we tend to be like kind of the pendulum, you know, pendulum swing. Go yes. From yes. Extreme to the other, you know. Mm. And really, the important issue is, is, you know, what is the Lord saying? in all this what is the holy spirit yeah saying mm. you know uh to us because he lives in us he yeah. mm. and uh he is he is our gps our, yeah. you know, our yeah. internal gps you know yeah. and guides us and speaks to us against all the persuasions and contradictions and, because the world is full of it and so is yeah. the church everyone's yeah. got an opinion you know? mm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. everyone's got opinions yeah, I don't even listen to any messages that contradict the goodness of God. Right. I, don't, I don't even give mm. it five seconds. I don't want it. Mm. You know mm. what? I mean, you've got to stand against unbelief, okay? Yes. Mm. Yeah. And I'm not going to sit and listen to it. That's <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> you know, uh, You're not Timothy, graze on it. Yeah. Uh, Second Timothy um, 2. Mm. Uh, yeah. 22 says that's 2222. Two, two, two. Yeah, flee also youthful lusts, mm -hmm. but follow after righteousness, faith, and charity, peace with them that call on the name of the Lord mm. out mm. of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid. Mm. Knowing that they do gender strife. That's I mean, right. I don't even want to get into it. You know what I mean? Hey, if somebody doesn't want to believe that healing is for, day, for today, yeah, go, go believe what you want to believe. Okay? Mm -hmm. Don't rain on my parade. Amen? <laughs> it says, uh, the servant of the Lord must not strive, right. but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, and patient. Yes. In meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance, they'll give them a, a totally change of mind to the acknowledging of the truth. Because yes. you know what? They're denying the truth. <laughs> if, if somebody's opposing the truth, they definitely need repentance. Yes, amen. Amen. It's like going in the opposite direction. Yep. You know, God is good. And he wants to do good to all of his children. If Amen. you've got somebody saying, well, you know what? That's not for today. And, you know, God doesn't want to do this. Why in the world would I want to listen to that? Amen. That's, right. That's an, in opposition to the truth. It says that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him 
at, at his, his will. will. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I don't want to be taken. I don't want to be there under his will. The, the, I mean, God the, is good. The devil has his own Bible school. You know. That's what he does. <laughs> He twists the scriptures and yes, he does. You know, Amen. well, this has been good. Amen. Uh, Lord I see so Laura good. busy cleaning. <laughs> Hi, Laura. That's a nice place. Yeah, but we she love you, just, Laura. She was listening. You know, yes. when you're done, come on over. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Make you a nice meal. <laughs> Happy birthday, Jim. It was your birthday, right, Jim? Oh, yeah, yeah yesterday. yesterday. Yes. Yesterday. Yes. And Deanne's yes. is Thursday. Oh, okay. So we'll be at Damon's. Okay. That's <laughs> where we were yesterday for our free meal. I know yeah. where to find you on your birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, mm -hmm. a restaurant right on the beach. And yeah, they, that they was good. Them. Yeah. It's that's awesome the thing well, they was, do. Thank you, Lord. He had the ribeye. Yeah. Nice, nice. Well, I'll probably, I'll probably have the ribeye on Dan's birthday. <laughs> he had the ribeye, and I had the the, the ground sirloin. Oh yeah, that's, that's with the living. mushrooms and onions and gravy. Right. I like it because it's great. That's <laughs> don't they call it another name? It's a fancy name for steak, uh, the uh, hamburger. <laughs> Yeah. What is it? Yeah, hamburger steak. Hamburger steak. Yeah. Bison burger. That's the poor man's steak. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I like it. I like. It. Oh, I've never had it before, and everybody gets it. And I said, I'm gonna try it. I says only if your potatoes don't look funky. I said the last last birthday we had their potatoes look really bad. She goes, I know what you're talking about. I'll go check. She goes, they look good. <laughs> she was a very uh, helpful waitress. Yeah. But anyway, life is good, eh? Life is Amen. good. Amen. And we mm. receive oh, everything yes. that God has for us. Amen. Jesus. You know, David Amen. said, I would have fainted if I had not believed to see the goodness of God, God in the land of the living. The living. That's I'm, this I'm, side I'm, of the dirt, baby. That's right. <laughs> I was just thinking of that 99 year old. I thought, wow, okay. I, I still got at least 34. I can do a lot of damage in 34. Oh, seconds. yeah. Amen. In a good way. You know, mm -hmm. I feel you like I'm what? just, in, in a lot of ways, I feel like I'm just getting started. You know? Yeah, exactly. I feel like, man, this is I'm just starting to get it. It's not time <laughs> where it's stage left. I know. I know. You know, when you stop and you think the man that wrote that uh uh Moses, the 90th Psalm, where it said talked about a man's life is 70, 80 years if he's a strong man. <clears throat> he was 120. Mm. No, mm. he's not talking about the longevity of our life. Nah. He's referring to the wilderness experience. Mm. But uh, mm. man, when you see that, and these were Old Testament saints, and we have a greater covenant than they had. Right. Exactly. Caleb, at the age of 85, took the mountain. Take the mountain. Yes. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> take, take Australia in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> and I was. <laughs> And I was only thinking, you know, um, you know how um, oh, the guy that called the fire down onto the, you know, where God had the 300 prophets hid. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking, you know, there must be, God must have people in Australia somewhere that's preaching the truth. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Has to be. Has oh, to yeah. be. Mm -hmm. so. If he had those 300 tucked away for a special time, he must have people tucked away here somewhere. 300, yeah. He's got to find them. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Mm. Hey, we're Amen. open. We're open to going and planting seeds wherever God says. Hallelujah. Got good partner. She's she's traveling with me, so she's, <laughs> she's ready to roll. Uh, mm. Praise God. But we, but we do need the physical, right? ability and strength and health and all oh, yeah. that stuff to do it 
you know? That's right. You know, yep. isn't it the truth that, you know, we're strengthened day by day in our inner man. Yes. Amen. Amen. Mm. And yeah, I mean, he is the strength of my life, you know? Mm. And I mean, how in the world am I going to fulfill my mission of whatever it is that God wants me to do? If I'm sick and weak, and then mm, mm -hmm. well, maybe I'm head. To show somebody that you know how strong you can be in sickness. It's so sick, and that is such a lie of the devil. Sickness is an attack of the enemy. Sickness mm -hmm. is a devil. Yeah. Do I want to partner with any part of that? No. Come on, what part of this don't we get? Sickness is of the devil. The thief comes to yes. steal, kill, yes. Yes. and destroy. Yes. But yes. I have come that you may have life, have life and life more abundantly. The Zoe life, the resurrection life, which will quicken your mortal body and make it alive. Mm. Kids, let's grab the whole thing. Amen. Mm. Mm. All right. Laura looks, Laura looks like she's in pretty good shape there, cleaning away. I bet she feels good that she's not sick, yeah. puking her guts up or something. Amen, Laura? She's Ain't you thankful? She's only 78 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never sick. Huh? See that? Look at that. That's I actually word. talked about that this morning. I said, you know, you can believe, you can have faith in sickness, or you can have faith in God. That's right. That's right. Come on now. So I was raised like that. I, you know, you, you give, you give authority to sickness. You're saying it's bigger than God. That's so right. I refuse to do that. That's right. Um, Good. I've had some scary things come up, and you know, like uh, blood in my stool or whatever. And I said, nope, I'm not even going to look at it. That's right. And, and, you know, most people say, well, if you don't go to the doctor and they, they try to produce this fear in you. And yeah. I said, well, I, I don't believe in that. Um, I believe that God is, a, one, God is a healer. And yes. Eula, you, you, gave, uh, you shared a testimony about that woman who is blind. And um, the guy said, I... I don't know how it went, but oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The guy, yeah, he he said, close your eyes. He prayed for her, and he says, okay, can you see? And she went to open her eyes, <laughs> and uh, he said, close your eyes. <laughs> and he said, okay, now can you see? And she went to open her eyes. He said, close your eyes. Third mm -hmm. time, she went to open her eyes. He said, I didn't tell you to open your eyes. I asked you if you could see. Can mm -hmm. you see yourself seeing? Mm -hmm. She hesitated. She prayed in tongues. And she said, yes, I can see myself seeing. He says, open your eyes. And she could see. Yeah. So that, that's the exact same thing with any healing. Um, if you see death, you'll, you'll look through the lens of death. And if you see life, you'll look through the lens of life so you, you know you guys talk about persuading the heart um my dad he's a christian scientist so the one thing that i can agree with is the healing aspect um and i i just we never went to doctors and and uh we always believed uh it's more than just healing. It's understanding that you were never. Um, the lie comes on, you know, and, and some of that you might disagree with, but I've found uh, many times when I go to that place that I'm made whole. And um, if Christ lives in me, then I can't be sick. That's right. There's no way. There's no room for it. Like, so. So if that's the case, then I, I can go to the place of, well, I'm complete. And, you know, something my dad always told me, he, uh, he said, you know, in the beginning, 
what did God say after the seventh day? Everything else was completed. What does it? What what is completion? Everything's unfolding that's already been completed. So if if that's the case, and God made every if He made us and He made us in His image, and we're complete, lacking nothing, then I don't lack anything in my body. And if I believe that, I'll see the fruit of it. Mm-hmm. You know, the scripture mm-hmm. says in um, scripture says in John, First John, as He is, so are we in this world. That's right. yeah. And and in Corinthians, where it says, "If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new." Well, that newness all happened in our spirit. When our spirit got born again and Christ came to dwell in us, the scripture says in 1 John, he that is born of God sinneth not. Well, that's your born again, sealed Holy Spirit, sealed person. Okay? It's impossible for him that is born of God to sin because it's untouchable. That portion of you, that your spirit is exactly like Jesus. You're full of Jesus. You're sealed with the Holy Ghost. You know, if something is sealed, nothing can get in, nothing can get out. And and so in our spirit, we are perfect. But now the scripture talks about the salvation of the soul. You know, in Hebrews, it says, you know, we're not of those that draw back unto perdition, but we are of those that believe to the saving of the soul. That's right. And the soul is the mind, the will, and the emotions. So when the soul is renewed by the renewing of the mind, then that perfection which is in our spirit will come forth and manifest in our physical body. That's right. So we've already got it. We're already healed. I say to people, when was you saved? Was you saved? When you confess Jesus as your Lord, or was you say 2023 years ago when Jesus forgave you of your sin and circumcised you from your union to Adam? So faith can only appropriate what grace has already provided. Salvation was provided for us at the cross. And when we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we appropriate by faith what he already provided by grace. Faith doesn't make something that's not. It just takes what is in the realm of the spirit and brings it into the physical realm. And it's the same way with healing. When were we healed? Well, Isaiah says, by his stripes we are healed. But Peter says, by his stripes we were healed looking back at the cross so Mm -hmm. we were healed back then so if we were healed we We are are healed healed. but but that healing is in our spirit and when we renew our mind to what god has already done in our spirit we will see a manifestation of it in our physical body that's right that doesn't take away the truth that we will receive a body that's incorruptible Oh, no. That's what (laughs) what people, but see, people go to the other pendulum swing of that, too. Like, I I believe that he would never go to the grave, that he would never, you know, that he could believe enough that he would never, never die. You know what I'm saying? Who wouldn't die? And and guess what? He died. (laughs) He went to the grave. But, you know, it's just, it's just. But, you know, our spirit has been redeemed our spirit has been saved we're still waiting for the redemption of the body Amen. Well, that's what i was looking in in romans 8 that we romans receive 8. the first fruits of the spirit even we ourselves grown within ourselves waiting for the adoption <laughs> to wit the redemption of our body that's right. absolutely and that's yet to come that's to come. Yes, right. to come. But, that doesn't, to... but that doesn't take away that that we can experience that life now yeah. In this mortal flesh in this right. mortal body. That's why he yeah. includes it all in there. 
Well, look at Paul when he was on that island after the shipwreck. And that viper latched onto his hand. Mm -hmm. And he shook it off into the fire. Yeah. Well, they thought, oh, the gods are after him. Yeah, he's going to he die escaped, now. He escaped being drowned. Mm -hmm. But now the gods are going to make sure he dies. <laughs> and he shook it off. And then they worship him as a god. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, you know, shake it off. The life of God, the life of God in Paul was bigger than the venom bite of that serpent. And he, I like how you say he shook it off because that's what Laura was saying when, you know, something comes to to try and persuade you about some kind of report, you just shake it off. You know, mm -hmm. you're not going to give place to it. He says, don't give place. No. no. Do a report that's contrary to the report of the Lord. Right? That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. So, that's good. Yeah. So it's good. like, I know I'm going to go get blood tests here on my birthday. Uh, every year I, I have a physical. I go get blood tests and stuff. And mm -hmm. the doctor, of course, everything's good, always good. But the doctor's always got some kind of report that he wants to sneak in there, you know? And so I, I, I usually go in with the full armor of God on. Yes. <laughs> and uh, just kind of, you know, but, you know, I, I know where he's at, you know, in his carnal way. You know, it's just yeah. like we walk by what he sees, and that's it. Yeah. And by that persuasion of, well, you know, the older you get, blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. you know? And so I, all that. <laughs> that I have a doctor that doesn't push all of the nonsense on me. You know, because yeah. I, I, you know, well, they're she's they're pill pushers. To say, a lot of them are pill pushers, to be honest. They're just, oh, yeah, them. oh, yeah, no. She'll say, I have to ask you this. Um, do you want to go get a mammogram? And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. Because <laughs> I mean, hey, all of this nonsense started when they started doing that. Right. You squash that part of the body and then put radiation in it. You're gonna yeah. activate something. Man, oh. goodness, you know, I don't go for that nonsense. My wife's the same way. She's yeah. Well, sure. what about you guys? You don't get I mean, there's very rare cases of men having breast cancer. <laughs> well, I go to Beulah's doctor. She's my doctor too. Yeah, but you don't get breast cancer. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Well, on that note, maybe we should close. <laughs> Yeah. This thing is getting out of control. <laughs> it's good. It's so good. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Life is good. You. Joe, you want to close us in a prayer? Oh, thank you. Oh, Father God, what an awesome God you are. Yes, you Father, are. just thank you for all your children as we come around, Father, to fellowship with one another and, Father, to receive the word of life. And we just thank you for this and just pray, Father, for the for the coming week until we even all meet again. Father, oh Lord, let us just draw close to you and Father God, just to, to be the lights in this world that you've called us to be. We just praise you and just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want everybody to see this shirt. See this shirt? You awesome. know what that is? That what was it? what they put on the doors during Katrina. Oh, yeah, it was, it was to Louisiana. Let, it let them know, you know, the rescue people, how many were in the house, what parish it was, and everything. Oh. Billy and Julie gave that to me when I was in uh, Slidell a few years ago. Oh, great shirt. Yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. It's All different right. now because I cut off the arms. I don't like long sleeves. So I cut off the arms and sew them up. You need to be free. Free. I love to have my cool. arms. I get hot. Cool and free. Yes. Okay. Life, huh? Amen. Okay, Thanks. kids. Well, listen. Can, I, can we just uh, pray for Donna? Yeah, yeah. We, I would just, uh, I just speak uh, to Donna's uh, body right now in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Lord. We just oh, life oh, and yes. health and um, an accelerated 
accelerated healing, Lord yes, Jesus. Father. Accelerated uh, recovery. recovery, Lord Jesus. And Father, mm. that you fill her mm. heart with joy and peace. Yes, she Lord. just rests in your love towards her. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Mm. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Have a blessed week. Mm -hmm. yes, Lord, yes. Bless everyone. Uh, Bye, Laura. Mm -hmm. <laughs>